I've been up and working till the morning, yeah. Yeah, they've been sleeping now, I swear they storming, yeah. Yeah, and I swear I'm cooking like a foreman, foreman. Uh, and my foreman jumping like it's Jordan on my way. Broom, broom, tell him I'm my lane, I've been praying. Yeah, yeah, gotta say this thing, I'm the same. I don't need another person telling me I can't. Alright, guys. What is going on? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are looking at Peyton Manning. What a name. What a player. What a legend. A current legend, actually. I feel like he's still playing. This, this uh, list was made back in 2010. We're in 2018 now, guys. That's eight years on, and he's still playing. He was voted the eighth greatest player of all time. Now, what I do know about Peyton Manning, I have done a, f a couple of videos on him. He was a quarterback. Um, a legendary quarterback because of his ability to read the game on the fly I think you know he'd see something happen before the the snap he'd, he'd change the call he'd do an audible um, you know probably constant audibles just all the time I don't know how many plays he had in his playbook but it was hundreds and um, he could really just pick apart a defense because of what he sees in front of him not only change the play before the snap but then once the snap happens, he's got the ball in his hand, you know, he's, he's, I, I don't know. I don't know how he does it. I don't know what he does, but we're about to find out. So I'm going to roll the intro and I'll see you in a minute. The quicker you're here, the faster you go. That's why where I come from, the only thing we know is. Okay, Peyton Manning, number eight on the top 100 NFL's greatest players of all time. Let's have a watch. But we just got to remember that this only covers his career up to the point of 2010. The Colts. You can put in whatever piece you want to put with 18. 18 to make it work. All he says is just find your way home. I'll get the ball there. And that's what the Reggie Wayne's the Dallas Clarks, the Marvin Harrisons. That's how dominant he is. Now, why is he so dominant? If you take him out the game, no disrespect to nobody else on the coast, but you make them a very below average ball club. Peyton Manning is the only four time MVP in NFL history. In 10 of his first 12 seasons, he led the Colts to 10 or more wins. But his greatest legacy may be his mental approach. Manning has turned the art of quarterbacking into a science. A lot of, you know, the first set of red, blue, huh, huh, is to see if you're jumping to your shell. You jump into your shell, it's easy. disguise him a certain way, but now he's stunning on that. That's how he beats you in places where you say, I can't even beat there. That would have, I'm sure that would have pissed Ray Lewis right off. On the championship year, his championship year, he made one up, I think, one of the greatest throws. Corey Ivo was covering Dallas Clark. A big third down. 357 left to play in the ball game. Adam McCoy steps up, fires on the numbers, it is caught on the 30-yard line. Before Dallas came out of his break, he had already released the ball. The clock moves on the first down, Colt. But released the ball to a point, Corey Hand was outstretched, and the ball, I, I still say to this day, and it grazed. Corey's fingernail. I have no idea how Peyton Manning threaded that needle. You're pissed off in the game when it happens. <laughs> Mate, the catcher didn't even know. <laughs> but after it happens, you're like, that's why he's playing Manning. Anybody can say, oh, Peyton is good, and da 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 da. He works to be. You're talking about a guy pre game two, three hours, whatever his number one receiver is. Those same throws he makes in the games are those same throws in free game. But how many people will do that? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. From practice to free game to the game. You 
know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking, surely these quarterbacks would get shoulder injuries. Surely, like, they'd have to take care of their shoulder so well. I mean, you know, my, like, to hear he comes out before each game, two hours beforehand, and, and throws, and then goes into the game. He's, he's out there every single day at training, fucking throwing, throwing, throwing. Am I missing something here? Like, how do they keep their shoulders so healthy for so long? I've got, I've got to check that. Oh, my son's that. I'm like, that just didn't happen? He didn't just wake up and just, oh, I'm good. No, I guarantee you, there were some hours he spent by himself. A lot of them. That's what greatness is, man. Greatness is by yourself. Nobody else can make you be great. That's why I appreciate it when I see it. So, by my calculation, they said that he played 12 seasons up to this point. If he's still playing now, he's in his 20th season. We're going to check that out. I actually haven't seen him play or heard like his audibles until that video. So to see him like go up, up, like eh, eh, all over the place, you go here, you go here, 53, 84. It's like, imagine if you're on defense and, and like he calls a big play Okay, and then he cancels it. He looks at you guys, he's like, nah, cancel it. Put calls another big play. On defense, you're just thinking, what is this guy doing? Like, you wouldn't have a clue what's gonna happen. Would you? Or maybe you would, if you're good enough, of course. If you understand the game more than I do, I wouldn't have a clue. The best, the best defensive players in the league would. Um, what have we got here? What have we got here? Now, I, I, in the video that I've done previously on, on Peyton Manning, um, he, no, he's not playing currently, actually. He retired from the Broncos in 2015. What a fucking career. Retirement, here we go. Manning announced his retirement after 18 seasons on March 7th, 2016. His final words of retirement speech were, I've fought a good fight, I've finished my football race, and after 18 years, it's time. God bless all of you, and God bless football. After 18 years with NFL, Manning received the 2016 SB Icon Award. He won nine total ESPY awards during his career. On October 7th, 2017, in a ceremony attended by hundreds of fans, the Colts unveiled a bronze statue of Manning outside its Lucas Oil Stadium. Manning was also inducted into the Indianapolis Colts Ring of Honor and became the first player to have his jersey retired by the Colts since the team moved to Indianapolis. Okay. Okay, so he played Fucking hell, man. 266 regular season games, 27 postseason games. He threw for 539 touchdowns in his regular season career and 40 touchdowns in his postseason career. He had an overall record in his... Actually, no, they mentioned that in the previous video, that in 10 of his first 12 seasons, he had the team win at least 10 games. And you can see that here. His first season, they went 3-13, then 13-13, 10 and 6, and then in his fourth season, they went 6-10. And, and every single season after that, they've always won at least 10 games. When he's played every single game. The Manning Bowl. So he's got a brother, Eli Manning, that plays for the Giants at the moment, is that right? Peyton and Eli Manning played against each other three times in their professional careers, not counting Pro Bowls or the preseasons. These encounters were colloquial dubbed the Manning Bowl, and Peyton's teams, twice with the Colts, once with the Broncos, held a 3-0 record over Eli's teams. The first Manning Bowl was held on September 10th, 2006, and Peyton's Colts defeated Eli's Giants by a score of 26-21. The sec second Manning Bowl was held on September 19th, 2010, with Peyton and the Colts besting Eli's team again by a score of 38-14. The third one took place on September 15th, 2013, and Peyton and the Broncos beat Eli's Giants 41-23. So it doesn't matter what team, could be the Colts, could be the Broncos. Eli just doesn't have it over his brother, does he? And apparently this year he doesn't have it either. I don't know much about Eli Manning, but <laughs> as far as well, as far as uh, what's his name, OBJ is concerned, he's um, he's not going with the plan. He's t he's done. Get rid of him. That's what, that's what OBJ said. I'm going to reserve my judgment. The Colts from 98 to 2011, the Broncos from 2012 to 2015, 
Two-time Super Bowl champion. 14 Pro Bowls. That is the most I've seen so far. The most. By a long fucking shot. Five-time NFL MVP. In that video, they said he was a four-time. He won it again in 2013. Fucking hell. NFL Comeback Player of the Year in 2012. So, another thing that came up a lot in my original video on him is that the only thing that I saw, the only footage that I saw was prior to his neck injury and coming back from that with the Broncos. So, I guess it would be only right for me to actually look up exactly what happened because a lot of people say, yeah, his career was great before that, but for what he came back from and how he played after that, I mean, I think he might have had his best years. It sounded like he did have one of his best years in 2013. So, we are going to look at what happened with this injury here and just get a bit of bit of context. So, on July 30th, 2011, he became their franchise player for the Colts on February 15th, 2011. On July 30th, 2011, the Colts signed Manning to a five-year, $90 million contract. In, after negotiations in which he made it clear that he did not need to be the highest paid player in the NFL. Okay, so he stayed with the Colts, they got him a little bit cheaper. After a May 23rd neck surgery, Manning, Manning could not use the Colts facilities for practice and workouts due to the NFL lockout. Okay, so we couldn't use any facilities whilst the lockout was on. Reluctant to have witnesses to his recovery from his neck surgery, he used the Colorado Rockies baseball team's trainers in Denver. Manning was unable to complete his throwing motion and his arm strength had significantly diminished. Based on an MRI, doctors told him in the late summer that he needed spinal fusion surgery and that at his age, they could not guarantee his return to the NFL. On September 7th, the Colts officially ruled Manning out for the season opener against Houston, ending his consecutive start streak of 208 games. 227 including playoffs. The team signed Kerry Collins out of retirement and named him interim starting quarterback. After seeking other opinions, Manning had the second surgery on September 8th. So he had his first one on May 23rd and his second one on September 8th due to his recovery not going well. He stated that while he did, did intend to play during the 2011 season, he would not fight the front office to stay off injured reserve if his roster spot was needed. Manning started practicing throwing footballs again in mid-December, with teammate Joseph Adai even claiming his passes looked game ready. Ultimately, Manning did not play a single game in the 2011 season, and the Colts went 2-14 and 14 without him. Only the third season since Manning was a rookie that the Colts did not win at least 10 games. We talked about that. With the Colts having the first overall pick in the upcoming 2012 draft, which contained highly rated quarterback Andrew Luck. I feel like he's there at the moment. They must have picked him. And with Manning due a $28 million roster bonus, he was released on March 7th, 2012. So he signed a five-year $90 million contract on July 30th, 2011, and was released less than a year later on March 7th. 2012. Earlier, the Colts had dismissed Vice Chairman Bill Pollian, General Manager Chris Pollian and Head Coach Jim Caldwell as a precursor to the rebuilding of the team. In an emotional press conference, he told Colts fans, thanks for letting me be your quarterback. Upon his release, Colts owner Jim Ursay announced that no Colt will ever wear the number 18 jersey again, and it was formally retired on March 18th, 2016. On the, top, on the NFL Top 100 Players of 2012, he was ranked 50th by his peers despite not, not playing a single game in the season prior. And that's funny because when I watched the 2018, season, uh, 2018 version of NFL's Top 100 Players, there was one player in there that people didn't agree with having because he hadn't played more than a couple of games. And I've got to try and think who it was. Who was it? Nick Minnett. JJ Watt. That was the one. JJ Watt. Yep, it was definitely JJ Watt. Well, I'm happy about that. We got it. We got it. And where were we? So, he was a free agent. He selected the Denver Broncos and started playing with them. He reached an agreement with the Broncos on a five year contract worth 96 million. So, <laughs> six million dollars more than he would have got with the Colts. Huh. This was written in 2014. From the ages of 15 to 35, Peyton never missed a game with an injury. 
His storied career including making every start for 14 seasons. But then his discs and joints in his neck hit the critical point where he started having serious pain and issues with throwing. As the build-up of arthritis and disc bulging progressed, the nerve became pinched. This is known as spinal stenosis or nerve compression. He eventually underwent his first surgery in February of 2010. What do we got here? Finally, okay, so, so he had a few attempts to, to fix what was going on. Finally, after failed conservative treatments and a long workout, Manning underwent, underwent a fourth surgery, which was a single level anterior fusion. September 9th, 2011. In this procedure, the surgeon removes the herniated disc and replaces it with the bone and places a metal plate which is screwed in above and below the removed discs. Disc. This takes the pressure off the affected nerve, stabilizes the spinal column, and reduces pain and numbness as a result. When Manning woke up, he couldn't penetrate a dartboard with a dart. I could barely get the thing to stick because he's so weak. Manning then carefully followed his post-operative instructions and began to recover the strength in his triceps. A long, slow rehab process began with some frustrations. However, this time with a stable neck following the fusion, things, beca things began coming along nicely and his throwing motion and strength improved dramatically with time. After another MVP season, Peyton Manning will strut out to the field to lead his Broncos in the Super Bowl in 2014. The anterior cervical decompression and fusion is one of the most common and studied procedures in our field. It is the gold standard procedure for spinal stenosis and instability in the neck. The ability of Peyton to get back on the football field and return to greatness is a testament to how well patients can recover following this procedure and get back to almost any activity. Well, there you go. There you go. So now I know. Now I know the story, or some of it anyway. But, geez, to actually go through that, to actually, man, if I was following football back in, you know, the late 2000s, to see him miss a whole entire year of playing with these issues, you know, no one knew whether he was going to come, he had weakness in his arm, he had four surgeries, and then to finally come back and win an MVP? Like, come on, man. That is legendary stuff. It really is. There's one thing I just wanted to check, actually, believe it or not. I mean, you probably believe it by now. But, um, okay, here we go. So he's, no, he's not playing. He's not playing. Manning still works out. Despite being three years removed from his playing days, he still works out. He will be eligible for the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2021. Five years after his retirement in 2016. And I would be pretty safe to say if he's uh, the eighth greatest player of all time, that he will be inducted in that first year of eligibility. So guys, look, we're on to number seven next. The seventh greatest NFL player of all time. It's gonna be fun. If you have enjoyed this video, hit the like button. If you wanna subscribe, please do. Peace out.